Sometimes we just need a little bit of inspiration. So in today's episode, you're going to enjoy a number of mini excerpts from presentations I've done around the world, live conferences, interviews, and filming to help you ignite passion today, ignite the inspiration that desires to be expressed and to be shared. So enjoy these little mini clips, dive in, lean in, open yourself to greater potentials, to the possibilities that always exist, that exist right now, and vibrate within an inch of your skin so you too can discover Limitless. Enjoy this compilation and welcome to the High Performance Consciousness Podcast. The number one thing is to awaken the consciousness of the planet. To help people realize how powerful they are, how incredibly gifted they are, and how incredible the use of imagination is in changing one's reality. And with that, our whole world changes. And it changes not at a very slow, big, heavy wheel grind. It changes very quickly. The more people that can wake up to their own power, wake up to the inner game, the whole game we call life changes very quickly. They don't know how to own their own power because for so long they've been taught that their power lies outside of them in the permission granted, not granted from other people. So we look to society, family, religion, institution, education, governments. We look to all of those institutions that are outside of us for permission to grow, to change, to create, to evolve. And yet all of it is contained within us. And it's all contained in the imagination. Because if we can imagine a world that is different and we can impress that imagination upon our subconscious at night, every single night as we go to bed, then our waking day and our daily ritual and our daily routine will take on a new glimmer and a new glamour and our lives will seemingly change overnight because we now own our power. We now give credibility to our imagination. We no longer give away our power to allow other people to do our thinking for us. That's how we leak energy and that's how we lose control of our life and that's how we end up fighting for survival and living in a very narrow band of income, opportunity, love, peace and joy because we give other people permission before we give ourselves the same. solution is to get off your knees. Get off your knees and own your power. And how you own your power is you call your light back in. For every person, place, animal or thing, any event and circumstance that you have placed outside of you and said it was outside of your control, bring it in. Bring it in and own it and say you can make that change and you make the change by imagining a better outcome. Essentially you dream a better dream. everything that exists outside of you is the dream that was breathed into reality as a result of your willingness to engage your power or your willingness to give it away. It takes 5% to steer the ship in a new direction. 
based on you know mechanics and consciousness as it's starting to change and shift and and the tipping the scales of, of personal awareness you know we because we live predominantly trapped in a time-based matrix we look at days weeks months years and decades as a long time when in fact through the cycles of ages they are not even the freckle on the back of a giant you know what I mean? Like they're so inconsequential. It's the same as imagination. For you to change your reality, it may seem like a huge task, a monumental shift, but all that it is, is you observing the other side of your own universe. And in that moment, you are presented with the information that always has existed on that side of the universe. Just keep visiting that. And so as you do that, then that ripple effect, you become the pebble in the pond, the pearl in the pond. So the ripple of impact, the ROI, means that the 95% starts to awaken. And they start to awaken not because you are, you know, um, gathering other musicians and going to the peaks of, of every major continent and singing a new tune, as it were. You are actually vibrating differently exactly where you are in the now which then sends out a pulse that we are all connected to cellular wise neurologically deep within our hard wiring of DNA and that little beacon just hears it and it responds and one by one thousands by thousands they wake up the journey of awakening is the self and inside the self as we come to understand, there is no other. So us doing traveling is because we love to travel. It's because, we, because there is an adventure and an excitement and an intoxication that comes with interfacing with different culture, different language, different people, different belief systems. That's how, that's how we're acquiring information. But all the while, we're the bees pollinating all the flowers while the flowers are pollinating us. It's the same. There's a deep wound, a deep wound in the consciousness of people. And that wound is not an economic wound. It's not a physical wound. It's not a psychological wound. It's a spiritual wound. The spiritual wound is that at our depth, we feel separated. We feel alone. We feel like we need to climb our way back to wholeness. We need to find our way back somehow to our sovereignty, to our power. But inside of that, we're actually scared. So there's a fear of being reconnected. But both of those, separation and connection, they're both part of the grand illusion because we're never separated and we're never seeking connection because we are always connected. So the spiritual wound of man and woman, that's what drives us forward, to seek better, to seek deeper, to seek quality over quantity. That's why we do business, not for money, not for fame, not for direction, not for power, not for opportunity, we do it to find ourselves. And we do it, we find ourselves in community because who we bring to us are ourselves. We all have an origin that is greater than this terrestrial origin which means that we all have a capacity that's greater than this terrestrial experience. And so as, as we seek to embody our potential, fulfill our life desires, it's about embodying the supernatural. It's about embodying the super in the self. And the super is the higher, it's the more expanded. From the perspective of rising and shining, you know, most people, regardless of what industry, what business, whether they're in family, 
bringing up children or wanting to start a family, it, it does not matter. As an individual, as a spirit, as energy moves to its zenith point, as it rises in the sky, as the sun does, shadows have nowhere to hide. So they must be revealed. And so that is what we fear. We fear from the deep psychosocial comp uh, complex that we have been taught that you cannot grow bigger than your environment. Otherwise you will be pulled back in. You must be regulated. You, you cannot create extreme disruption to the point of breaking the system, meaning the person next to you, their old way of thinking or their current way of thinking, all the way up to organizations and, you know, country and world culture. So this genetic predisposition follows us until we choose to collapse it. And how we collapse it, you must be prepared to shed your garment. It mu you must be prepared to change your identity. You are still a soul. You are still an energy-rich experience within the cosmos. But what a lot of people, most people, are afraid of as reg regarding change or transformation is the old world that I am attached to that have, has contributed to building and maintaining my identity will be disrupted. And I do not know how, I've never been taught on how to deal with the fallout of that because I care for the people that are in my life and I want them to come with me. And wanting them to come with me, there is this element that I need to save them because they cannot see. But in you wanting to save them, you are the blind leading the blind. Your change, you transmitting a new frequency, making a shift, changes them. Your presence is the key. You only need to think of them, action at a distance. Have them in your awareness and little by little they will shift. Words are the least reliable form of communication. Your energy precedes you. So set the example by vibrating at tone. You are the tuning fork for humanity. And the way that you get to experience that and to help expedite that process is through business or through family or through community. They may not know consciously that it does. So this whole notion of tribal shaming, this whole notion of generational change, it's real because it's encoded in the sequencing of our DNA and the expression of our DNA in protein synthesis and also in you know, chemical, biological and every, or the, the whole functioning of our body and our, our living experience. But it changes because we decide to change. And it comes back to our imagination. What is the world that we wish to live in? You know, my favorite movie of all time is the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And one of his, his songs, Pure Imagination, the line, if you want to see paradise, simply look around and view it, which means transcend the hologram that you see which means if you do not see with your own eyes that which you want to, then through your imagination, change what you want to see and believe in that. And that is how we change the world. Mm. It's like a movie script. <laughs> like a movie script. And that is how we change, the, that's world. How we change the world. Boom. Yeah. Wow. We are broadcast to this physical instrument. So from the one and zero, from a programmable perspective, we do write our reality. We write it through the chemistry of our intentions, but most importantly, we write it through the chemistry of how we feel. When they are synergistic, they come together on the same thing like a laser beam then there is coherence. And when there is coherence, there is power. There's not force. Force is when our mind says one thing and our emotion says another. One may be called intuition, one may called will and drive. But power is when you are aligned and you are in harmonic resonance with your end. So 
If you can see your end, you can see your outcome in your life, your business, your relationship, your finances, whatever it is, if you can vividly see that, then from a construct perspective, it exists. Because you see it, you give birth to it. So whatever you observe, you create. And in whatever you observe consistently, you give energy to. And whatever you give energy to consistently over time, uh, assume strength. Therefore, the strongest frequency wins. So if you have a vision that you tap into irregularly, every week, once a month, you go to an event on a weekend and you get super pumped up and then all of a sudden you go back into the agar dish, into the petri dish, the environment you just came from that you've in, spent most of your waking life and sleeping life in for the last decade, three, four, five decades, then you are fighting against the strength that is built and maintained in that environment. Call it the people, places, events, and circumstances. So if you wanna change your reality, you change your environment. And the way you change your environment, first must be done inside. Because as you're cycling through this currency, this energy, is it slow? Is it oscillating? Is it declining? Or is it advancing? And so how we shape our reality is through the coherence of our thoughts and our feelings. And that is of the universe. That is how we magnetize the field around us. So you do not need to live in any other time other than right now. So if you move between from this side of the room to the other side of the room, you are moving through space. You move through spaces to experience time. So the analogy is also the illusion for people in business because the harder I work and the more how-tos I accomplish, the more steps and tasks I can tick off on a weekly, monthly basis to get the token in the gamification called life, then I'm winning. No, you actually are stuck in the matrix. You're stuck in a linear program that says to get from point A to point B, I must travel linearly from this point to that point, and I must do it in time. In your imagination, you are beyond time. So as you imagine it, you create it. And as you continue imagining it, you build strength, which means your body is now being fed electromagnetic signals from your thoughts and feelings, which then ripples out as a signature into the field. In this moment and every single moment moving forward, you are creating that same reality, which means it is gaining strength. And so for it to appear in the world of matter, in the world as a slower vibrationary rate, you could say that it takes time. And yet, time is irrelevant to you because you go back into the world of imagination and you just live it again and you live it again. So by the time that it arrives in the world of matter, you're not surprised and you're not overwhelmed and you're not rejecting it. You are openly receiving it in full expectation because you have lived it a thousand times before. Well, if you made it this far into the episode, I hope you enjoyed those little vignettes of inspiration. Go back and listen to it as often as you like and pay attention to the feelings that move up inside of you, the ideas that are sparked from moment to moment, the new clarity that is birthed with your ever-expanding awareness. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed putting it together with you. So from me here to wherever you are in the world, remember to dream a better dream. See you in the field. <laughs>